Greetings. Um, I thought I would uh, give you guys a little rundown on some of the assorted styluses available for iPad and Android touchscreens, iPhone, etc. Um, I pretty much own one of all the major ones that are available. And I thought I'd tell you which ones I like, which ones I don't like. Uh, there's really two that stand out to me, and the rest are kind of eh. <clears throat> First, we'll start out with the one that I think you should just avoid because the tech is advanced way beyond this, and honestly, I think that they're uh, it's outdated. But basically, this happens to be one from Pogo. Uh, the only thing about this one I do like is it's really small, so it fits in your pocket. Uh, you can basically velcro it to your side of your phone. I mean, it's smaller than the thickness of your phone or your iPad or whatever. Uh, it tucks away nicely. You can also lose it easy. It's lightweight. It doesn't fit in your hand very well because it's so small. But if you need a, a touch pointer for, like a stylus for typing or doing basic sketches and you just want something quick and fast, this one works. The downfall of this one is the tip. And... Uh, the tip on this is actually a conductive foam which squishes and bends. And you can see how it's kind of bending like that. As you use it, and you can see it's kind of lopsided leaning towards that way. As you use it, you get that bending effect and it gets hard to get accuracy because the foam is bending. I don't like it for that reason alone. Uh, then you have pretty much the cookie cutter ones which the tip on them is identical on almost all these, and there's, I think, three or four companies that make this particular st stylus. They're almost identical. You can see almost exactly the same size. They have the same exact tip. Uh, it's a rubber, rounded rubber tip. The only difference, basically, is the brand. They all have pretty much the same weight. Like, this one is Griffin. I think this one is... Uh, the Best Buy brand. I'm not sure. I can't verify that. Um, these do the trick really nicely. They're pretty cheap. They're 12 to $15 a piece. They write pretty well. The tip is a little fat on it. And this the smoothness of the rubber wears out. But these will do the trick. However, there are better choices. Now if you want something that's a little different than a standard, uh, standard issue uh, stylus, you can go with something like the Nomad brush. Uh, this particular one is the dual tip, the long dual tip, which essentially has an actual conductive brush tip on one side that's, I don't know, three quarters of an inch long. And then it's got a smarter, a smarter, a smarter, I'll get the word right here in a second, shorter, I know I could do it, a shorter brush tip here for basic navigation, pointing and touching. Um, there's several things about this I like, several things I don't like. The things I do like is, it feels like it was handmade by somebody who cares. Uh, it's a really cool looking stylus. Um, the tips screw in and out. There's a lid you can put on it so you can only have one tip on as you want. Or like an end cap, not a tip, but you can replace either one. Uh, but what I do not like, two things. One, on this end, when you're drawing with it, it works great, but when you're pointing, you end up hitting these little tips like on the very end there, and they kind of bend, and you don't quite get a, a register a touch or a tap, and you end up tapping several times sometimes. Uh, in my opinion, that's a problem if you're trying to use it to, to navigate through menus and not just drawing. The other downfall of this one is actually the brush. And it's not the brush's fault. This is a great conductive brush. The problem is the touchscreen technology on the tablets just does not work with this correctly yet. Um, obviously, when you use a brush like this and you press it down, it spreads out. Well, as far as I can tell, none of the apps that are out, and I don't think even the operating system yet and any of the devices, supports the fact that this brush is there. It should, in my opinion, if it's spreading out, the multi-touch screen should sense it's spreading out and it should draw a line that fits the width of that brush, whether you go in light or whatever. But instead what happens is, whether it's like this 
where it's spread way out like this, you get the line right down the center point of the brush. And the other thing that's just kind of disconcerting and that is the tack itself. It's not the not the stylus's fault. Is the fact that as far as I know, there are no one-to-one -one reactive touch screens on the market yet. So when you draw and you do a paintbrush stroke, there's always that little bit of a delay as the 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 processor in the tablet or whatever catches up and draws. This one's pretty decent for doing general brush strokes and that kind of stuff, but honestly, I have two other styluses I'd much rather use than this, and uh, those I'm going to cover here next. This one's not bad, it's reasonably priced. Um, if you're a painter, this may be a good way to get you started in painting on your iPad or your Android tablet or whatever. But I would not recommend this for daily writing and basic sketching because there's two of the choices that I think blew it out of the water. One of those is what I consider to be the de facto standard for styluses. It's the Wacom Bamboo Touch. Uh, it is a excellent, nice heavy weight stylus. Um, the little plastic tip you notice, or rubber tip, and you can compare it to this, is much smaller so you get a lot better accuracy. And it's actually this one's actually geared for the iPad specifically and that touch screen tip is designed for the to get the maximum use of the, the iPad's touch sensitivity area. The tip is replaceable, you unscrew this little yellow sleeve or yellow, it's not yellow, silver. You replace the silver sleeve and you can place these tips. Unfortunately they're kinda hard to find right now, but when you start wearing the tip out, uh, you'll find that you'll be able to apply by replacements. And the stylus itself is not very expensive. They're, I think it's 30 bucks, which, I mean, that's expensive if you're buying a pen, but it's not a pen, it's a stylus. And this thing is very well made. Another thing I like is this little piece here unscrews, and you can take this clip off. So if you're not a fan of the clip, you can take it off and then just screw the top back on. But the thing I really like is the weight and the way it feels when you write with it. Uh, it's it's like drawing with a pen, and you you still have that little bit of a lag when you draw, but it's excellent for sketching and drawing and that kind of stuff, taking notes, etc. But my favorite for note taking, and I also have drawn with this one quite a bit in 53's paper app, and used note uh, note taker HD, is the Jot Pro from Adonit. This thing is it's pure genius. First of all, it has great weight like the bamboo from Wacom does, but its its unique feature is this tip. It's got this it's like a ballpoint tip and I, it's hard to tell, but it's got a ballpoint tip that has a little conductive disc on it. And you can see through the disc and you can see through what you're writing. So when you're writing on the page, you're seeing down to that ballpoint right in the middle where you're actually drawing on your tablet. So if you're drawing, like if you're doing taking notes, it's like drawing with a ballpoint pen on your screen almost, except that that disc is there. And it works great for painting, drawing, sketching. Uh, I use this one a lot in uh, 53's paper app, which is a great app. Uh, it has a really cool feel to it. Uh, this also works really well in pretty much any of the sketch apps, penultimate, uh, note taker HD for taking notes, um, pretty much any of the drawing apps like Adobe Ideas, etc. I mean, Sketchbook Pro, you name it. Um, the only downfall to this one, and it's a biggie if you have a screen protector is, this tip, this conductive tip does not slide on the screen protectors. I have yet to find one that it will slide on, it sticks like it's stuck on rubber. And for those of you who have the Zag screen protectors, you know that even if your fingers are a little wet, it drags on the screen. Imagine trying to drag this across a rub, like a piece of rubber. It's that's what it's like. But aside from that, this is an outstanding stylus that I would highly recommend having in your collection. And because you have this nice nifty cap you can put on, so you don't lose the tip, you're good to go. It's also magnetic, so it'll stick to your iPad's cover which is really nice if you've got the smart cover. Um, I believe that the uh, Wacom Bamboo also does that, but I'm not sure. But 
this is definitely my favorite of all of them, and then I also use this one pretty regularly. And I've only had this one for a little bit. I had this about a week. Um, the rest of them I've had for quite a while, and using these is like night and day. So you can see there's the, the magnetic stuff going on. But definitely, if you want a stylus for your iPad, Wacom Bamboo Touch, definitely. And if you want a really good stylus overall, especially for taking notes and stuff where you get pinpoint accuracy, this Adotant Jot Pro, to me, is worth every penny, and I would highly recommend it. And, uh, like I said, the one to avoid, or the ones to avoid, are the ones with this conductive phone tip. It gets squished, and stays deformed, and it's just not very accurate. And in my opinion, that, that even though they're cheap, I just dropped the pin, uh, even though those foam connective omens are cheap, they're not worth it, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of sketching and drawing. So, Wacom Bamboo Touch and the Adonit Jot Pro. Those are my two big choices. Uh, can't go wrong with either. And I think that once you've tried them both, you probably will fall in love with them both. They will make a lot of your sketching, drawing, and note-taking apps um, come to life. You'll feel like you can actually do things in them, sketch in them, feel like you really can produce art. And uh, I know artists who use them, and I'm not really, I don't consider myself a professional artist. I'm just a person who does sketches and takes notes. But when I go to class later this month, I'm going to be using my Jot Pro to take notes on my iPad. And um, so that's my recommendation and general thoughts. Um, I will do a video showing the pins in action at some point, but I just wanted to show them since I have so many and I've had several people ask me what stylus do I use. So anyway, Alien Meat Sack signing out. Peace out, bros. And ignore the peace out, bros thing. That was kind of silly, but.